If we think of 1492 as the traditional start of American history, that is when Columbus sails across the Atlantic Ocean, we often have a sense uh, that the Europeans had that they've discovered a, a new world. Uh, and, I, and for them it was a new world. I mean, it was filled with great possibilities in all sorts of ways, and they look forward to exploiting those opportunities. But of course, we know as scholars that they had arrived in an, in an old world, a world that had already been thoroughly settled. There were millions of peoples across the Americas. North America alone might have been divided into as many as 500 separate sorts of communities. And one of the early mistakes that Europeans made is that Europeans looked at this landscape and in their words, uh, they saw a wilderness. The Pilgrim Governor William Bradford in 1620, you know, looking out at what modern day Massachusetts, said that the pilgrims had arrived and they'd come into a vast wilderness filled with hideous beasts and hideous men and they didn't know what multitude there were of them. Well, it wasn't a wilderness. It might have been a wilderness to the Europeans, but in fact, what Bradford set out, what Bradford saw what other, what other Europeans saw was a world that had been shaped very consciously, very decisively by peoples who'd been there for generations, in some places many, many generations. I mean, they'd really understood uh, the world that they lived in and they'd found ways to master that world. They'd found ways to communicate across uh, what we might think of as tribal or indigenous boundaries. Uh, there were mediums of exchange like wampum, you know, small shells harvested in Long Island Sound or Narragansett Bay that we could, archaeologists have found deep into the interior. I mean, these are people who lived in a very sophisticated, complex societies. Uh, it was anything but uh, the wilderness the Europeans thought.